Hi, it's Caleb here, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Jedi Cruiser mock that I pretty much built. So basically, this was pretty much inspired off of like this old forgotten Lego set. There's this like 2013 or 2011 like Jedi Cruiser Starfighter thing, and I thought it was a really cool set, a very underrated set. Like, not a lot of people really talk about that set that much. Although I do think it was a really cool set, it did have some problems. Like, I feel like the the interior of that just wasn't that much. Like, there was just the two little seats for the guys, and that was it in that really big ship. But I pretty much tried to build a version of that, and I pretty much built a version of that myself. And it was a, pretty inspired off of that actual model from 2011 or 2013. And so I kind of took inspiration off of that and kind of remade it almost, but gave it a lot more interior and kind of fixed up some things. So without further ado, I'm going to give you a little tour of this guy. This did take me probably, I built it in the span of about five days and took me, I would estimate about six hours. Like this was a really long build because there was a lot of stuff I had to change up and mix around and really just do a lot of like testing with, but the finished design is actually pretty good. It's quite sturdy. Like you can hold it from one end and shake it and it won't really, you know, crack or anything. That side might pop out a bit, but you can hold it pretty much from anywhere on the ship and it will still be stable, which is quite nice. That's a pretty sturdy design. As you can see, it kind of stuck with that like color scheme from the original one with the dark red and the gray, because I think that's a really cool color scheme on a Lego set or a Lego model. You do have like the front windshield there, so that's where they actually look out on. And you really have a lot of hints of dark red everywhere. This is actually the like dish that's actually provides like the force field around it. I kind of made that up, and then there's a satellite on the other end. And I did use a fair amount of greebling and cool techniques like that. We really do just have a lot of greebling on it. Here you can see I even have a whole little strip of greebling that turned out pretty cool. And we have six thrusters back there with two big fins and a cockpit, which we will get to later, and just really a lot of greebling around the entire model, which made it look really cool with a bunch of different textures, and really a really cool look for a Lego model with all this greebling and all this really cool textures going on around it. And you can see I also rounded off that part pretty well. It was a little bit hard to round off to find the right pieces to kind of round that side off, but I feel like I did it pretty well. Where this model really shines is the interior, in my opinion. I really had it added a lot of interior because there is a lot of space for interior in here, and I wanted to include a bunch of different things, so I had to kind of cram parts of it, but I feel like I did it pretty well. And really the main way to access the interior, you can actually pop off this little section. It's just a couple studs there, but really the main way to do it is you can actually... The top roof is on hinges, so you can wind that open, and then you can pretty much wind all of this part open to really get a cool access of the interior. Okay, the ship is pretty much built for carrying Jedi and carrying Jedi from one place to another, and so it's really like a way of transforming, well, transporting <laughs> Jedi from one side of the galaxy to the other. Starting off on the right side here, we pretty much have the medical bay. I knew I wanted to include like a medical bay in there for doctors and stuff, and so we do have a little protocol droid there. We have a 501st trooper with his helmet on the ground. We have a bunch of controls. We really have a little bed set up, and it actually goes back pretty far in there. It's pretty deep. Have these cool white walls, more controls, a shelf, a crate, and a bunch of stuff back there. And you can also see back there, there is a small soldier, and actually back there is the main entryway. Near the bottom of the model, there is this little bar, and you can literally just fold that down, and there is a direct access right in there. And so that's kind of the loading ramp where they would initially walk up into the ship, and where they would pretty much load all the things into. And that did turn out pretty cool, although it's not very practical, it does look pretty cool to have it done there. And the left side of the ship, we pretty much have the meeting room or conference room, along with the control bridge. This would pretty much be where the control bridge is, and I even made my own custom Bulio Jedi. Since, of course, it's, it's like a Jedi transporter, I need a Jedi, so I pretty much made Bulio Jedi. As I said, it is pretty much the control area or the control bridge, and so we have a bunch of computers and stuff there for Bulio to actually operate the ship, and that's pretty much what actually pilots the ship. And to the left of that, we have the meeting room with pretty much a hologram globe of the entire planet. So it's supposed to be like a hologram that has some controls there. And then we have like a Geonosis trooper, I want to say, sitting right there. And there is actually a crate behind him, which is a little bit hard to see. 
In the area in the back, there is actually a small spare room with some controls, and we actually have a 501st helmet pretty much sitting on a crate, which you can sort of see back there. You can see the 501st helmet just sitting on the crate there, and that does look pretty cool. It's a pretty small room, but you can have people stand up in it, and they can store some of their weapons onto there. At the side of the model with some of the greebling, we do have an escape pod. There is only one, but I feel like that is pretty cool just to have one on there. And what it does is you can literally just kind of pop it out. It's on this little track, so it goes pretty smoothly. And the whole escape pod pretty much pops out, and you can load it back into there if you want to. Really what it does is you can actually have your file first trooper just sit right in there, and then you can actually pop this entire thing on, I'm trying to do it one-handed here. You can pretty much have the entire escape pod fit into the ship over there and shoot out in case of an emergency. In the back of the model we have the thrusters as I mentioned earlier and more of this really cool dark red color. And one of the cool things is that these two compartments actually flip up just because I had some extra space there. And I thought, oh, why don't I just do that? And they do, you would never really know that they're secret compartments. But in the left one we pretty much have a rifle and that's really just an area to store the weapons. And on the left one, we pretty much have a crate of coaxium. Well, it's just a crate and then a tin of coaxium, or whatever you want to call it. But you can actually fit characters in here. I don't know why you'd want to, but you can fit a minifig in each one. But it's more of just a storage compartment near the back of the ship to store weapons and goods. In the back here, you might ask what this little cockpit is for. And the answer is this is actually a small ship that actually connects into there. It kind of locks into place. It locks itself into place like that. Just take it out like that, and it's sort of just a craft or, you know, something that you can carry your minifig on. has some controls there, but it's pretty much a bay where you can park a small spaceship, and it's built so they can actually have spaceships park onto here and then access the inside. Just imagine there's a door there. And pretty much the people can go from the ship to the inside there. And all you do is you just kind of lock it in place like that, and it locks itself into place pretty well. Bottom is pretty much all tiled off, although it does have these three main feet that are kind of what keep it in place. Here you have it, guys. That is my Jedi Cruiser remake mock. Remember, it was originally inspired off of that original 2011-2013 model. I really don't know what which one it was. And I thought it was a really cool set, except it didn't have that much interior, so I kind of made it, but with my own twist on it, and made my own original, you know, interior original Jedi minifigure and everything. So, Seabrook Productions, sign off for now. Make sure to like and subscribe, and thank you all for watching this tour of my Jedi Cruiser mock. Peace out. Bye.